if it's been difficult for you to see the trouble brewing in the housing market as of late, well now you should have a clear sign. Blackstone has been downgraded by Barclays as they limit withdrawals or redemption requests from their clients. For those of you who aren't familiar, Blackstone, uh, they're an asset management company. They manage about $950 billion, I believe, pretty much in real estate. And that consists of industrial and apartments. And I think they have some single family as well, but I'm not entirely sure. But I know it primarily consists of commercial real estate. So to be clear, they've already had some pre-built-in mechanism that basically stops withdrawals after they pass 2% of asset value within the month or 5% of asset value within the quarter. And so it's not like they just completely randomly chose to stop withdrawals because they feared liquidity crunches. Although they had to sell the MGM and Mandalay Bay hotels, which they own out of Vegas. So why the sudden increase in redemption requests anyway? Well, it's actually a clear sign pointing to the loss of confidence in the commercial real estate sector. With the Fed obviously going to continue to raise rates until further notice, but at least through the half of 2023, the cost of debt is going to keep going higher, which makes your debt on that property all the more expensive. So you can see how much rapidly rising rates could affect a company with basically a trillion dollars AUM. I think a lot of it has to do with just human behavior as well. If other investors are noticing a good chunk of investors are taking their money out, well, they're probably just going to follow suit. And so in October, they had uh, $1.8 billion in withdrawal requests. And in November, they had another $1.8 billion in withdrawal requests. Now they have about $3 billion in inflows every single month. And so while it wasn't close to everyone, it was, it's still a huge chunk of change to be withdrawn at one time. And so that automated mechanism kicked in as it noticed that withdrawals were over 2% for essentially two consecutive months. Now, I'm going to play a clip here from CNBC. I just want to show you guys the conclusion they came to. There was a, a lot of people like, I, I mean, I'm in awe of Jonathan Gray, and not only just for what he's doing here, but also for his charity. And I don't think this is kind of what you should have expected if mortgage rates shut up a lot faster. Uh, I, I'd like to know who doesn't trust and thinks that they're going to default. I mean, isn't that what people are worried about? Is, is Blackstone defaulting? No, or is, no. Or it's just no. the rate. It's just that, listen, it's not a great look when you, when you, when you, when you don't let your clients get out. No, bad that's look. it. Bad but it's, it's, not, bad it's, look. it's not about anything more than that. Okay, really that's fair. So I actually agree with those guys. Like I said before, I think human behavior plays a large role in what happens in financial markets. And in this case, once investors notice other investors start to lose confidence, well, naturally, their confidence starts to spiral as well. This limit in withdrawal requests just basically protects from capitulation or mass liquidation. And by the way, that protects the investors and the fund. So do I think Blackstone is gonna default on their debt or uh, they're gonna be in some precarious situation in which they could potentially go bankrupt? No. But it does point to signs in the slowing housing market. The Fed will continue raising rates in December, whether it's a 50 or 75 basis point hike, it will have negative effects on the labor market, which will have more negative effects on the housing market as your pockets are actually affected. And with the oversupply in multifamily housing that we've been discussing over the past few years, it's no surprise that Blackstone will run into these issues right now. So I don't think this is like some huge black swan event or anything like that. I just think it's an indicator because Blackstone is such a large participator in the housing market that you could use these guys as an indicator of what's coming. So stay tuned because there's going to be more negative data, as I've been saying, across the commercial real estate sector and the residential real estate sector. And as we continue to see more weakness in the labor market, it's only going to add or exacerbate those effects. But just remember, real estate is always local. And so what happens in Detroit is not going to happen in Florida. And what happens in Cleveland is not going to happen in Phoenix. So keep that in mind. It's local. National data always skews the entire picture. And so it really is local to your market. For example, if Blackstone owned 100,000 units in Arizona, for example, in Phoenix. Well, if they were forced to liquidate those 100,000 units or even half of that, you would see much more precipitous declines in a market like Phoenix 
versus others. And so it really does depend. So it's important to pay attention to where investors are buying, where institutions are buying, because as rates continue to rise, it's gonna affect those guys the most. And it has somewhat of a trickle down effect as they start to liquidate. And in my market, I'm seeing a lot of portfolios, a lot of large multifamily complexes because guys are liquidating right now. So stay on point guys, see you next time.